Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will be covering the usage of the terrain following radar, TFR. This system will aid you when your mission requires you to fly at a low altitude, especially in poor weather. We will also have a look at the forward looking infrared system, FLIR. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation on these systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use these systems effectively. Let's get into it. Preparation In order to use the TFR, the navigation pod must be loaded on the aircraft. While on the 2D map, go to the loadout screen. The pod we need for the TFR is the ANAAQ. 13 nav pod. If this pod isn't loaded on the aircraft, you can load it manually by going to the drop down list, click on other, and then click on the nav pod. There is a limitation to consider if you load the nav pod, which is you will not be able to load the HTS pod. So keep this limitation in mind if your mission is CAD or DAD. Set up inside the aircraft. When you're inside the aircraft, there are a few steps that should be completed before using the TFR. These can be done in the air, but as always I recommend performing these while on the ground. First, go to the sensor power control panel. Turn on radar altimeter by clicking the switch to the forward most position. Either on the ground or in the air, it is imperative for radar altimeter to be functioning in order for the TFR to function. Next, go to the flight controls panel. Make sure that manual TF fly up is set to enable. The TFR can function with this switch on the disabled position. However, the aircraft will not automatically pitch up if it detects proximity to terrain when the TFR is in manual operation, as we will see later. After that, on one of your MFDs, bring up the TFR page. The first OSB simply indicates the mode in which the TFR is in. Currently, it's on standby. The next OSB is for the TFR Ride Options. This is used to configure how the TFR will maneuver the aircraft when in autopilot. A soft ride limits pull-up commands to 2G and pushover commands to negative 0.5 G. Hard and smooth ride options both limit pull-up commands to 2 G and pushover commands to negative 0.9 G. But smooth ride provides peak-to-peak -peak flying. Comparing the hard and soft rides, the hard ride allows the aircraft to fly closer to an obstacle before commanding a climb. The next OSB completely shuts off TFR. Press it again to turn it back on. The following OSB for the channels is not implemented. The following five OSBs configure the altitude clearance you want from an obstacle. 1000 feet, 500 feet, 300 feet, 200 feet, and very low clearance which is 100 feet. On this latter option, when the TFR is in autopilot, it will only control the pitch of the aircraft. You won't be able to use heading select or steering select options for the autopilot roll. You will have to control the roll yourself. Because of this, very low clearance should only be used when flying over relatively flat terrain or over water. Finally, along the left side of the MFD, we have the TFR operating modes and options. Norm should be used in good weather and when the risk of the TFR's emissions being picked up isn't a concern. Low probability of intercept, LPI, reduces the emissions from the TFR. While in this mode, the roll autopilot options aren't available. Regardless of the terrain clearance value you selected, Standby puts the TFR back in standby mode. The last option, WX, weather, should be used when flying through adverse weather conditions. It filters out false returns from precipitation and clouds. 
operating the TF4 in manual mode. First, let's have a look at operating the TF4 in manual mode. Go to the TF4 page, select an option. For this example, I will select Norm and pick a terrain clearance of 300 feet. You will notice that on your HUD, there is now a rectangular box. This is the manual terrain following queue. Simply fly the aircraft in a way that your fly path marker is inside the box. As you approach an obstacle, you will notice the terrain advisory with an arrow pointing to the left, to the right, or both sides. Pull up. Pull up. This is especially useful in low visibility conditions. Altitude. Altitude. With manual TF Altitude. fly up enabled, up. you will also Pull notice up. that Pull the aircraft up. will Pull automatically up. pitch up Pull as up. you approach terrain. If you want to override this automatic pitch up, press the paddle switch on your stick. Operating the TFR in automatic mode. Go to the TFR page, select the mode and the terrain clearance value as before. After that, click the ADV mode switch. The TFR is now in automatic mode. In order to have it follow a fly path going from steer point to steer point, put the roll autopilot mode in steering select. I also recommend using the ICP and the DED having the steer points automatically cycle. You can do this by pressing 4 on the ICP for steer points, hit the ICP rocker sequence once, you will see on the DED that manual has switched to auto. As you can see there is now only a line instead of the box on the HUD. The autopilot will try to maintain the fly path marker on that line. Altitude. Altitude. You will also notice that with Altitude. the options I showed earlier, Altitude. the system will cycle the steer points and fly to the following one automatically. Usage in poor weather. When flying through poor weather with the TFR, you will notice that if you pick Norm, there are a lot of false returns from precipitation and clouds, making the TFR pretty much useless. In these situations, use the WX weather mode. As you can see, any interference caused by the weather is filtered out, and you can use the TFR as normal, either in manual or automatic modes. Usage at night and FLIR When operating at night, you can use the forward-looking infrared FLIR along with the TFR to aid with visibility. On one of your MFDs, select the FLIR page. The first OSB shows the FLIR operating mode. Currently, it's on standby. The following OSB turns the FLIR off. The next OSB cycles through the FLIR's polarity either black hot or white hot. 
After that, we have the bore sighting option. This is used to bore sight the FLIRS camera to a point. I will not demonstrate this, as I believe this can cause more harm than good, especially when using the FLIR on the HUD, as this is likely to induce parallax errors. The following OSB will show the grayscale when the FLIR is in operation. The following OSB puts the FLIR on standby. Pressing the last OSB will put the FLIR in operating mode. As you can see, the FLIR is now displaying an image. On top of the screen, we have the heading. On the right, we have the altitude. On the left, we have the calibrated airspeed. In the center, we have an attitude indicator, as well as a vertical indicator pointing to the next steer point. Once the FLIR is in operation, you can use the brightness ICP wheel to display the FLIR's image on the HUD. It's not a requirement to have the FLIR page open on your MFD to replicate the image on the heads-up display, so you can freely switch to another page if you wish. And there we have it. The TFR is a great tool to aid when flying in low altitude, especially in poor weather and or at night. So, if you'd like to replicate Top Gun Maverick's Canyon Run sequence in the rain and in the dark, the TFR will help you with that. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.